Defence Minister Anita Anand is in London, Ontario, touting Canada's defence sector. Specifically, the General Dynamics plant that manufactures light armoured vehicles. The Canadian government committed to sending 39 armoured vehicles to Ukraine. We caught up with Minister Anand in London earlier. Hi Minister, good to have you back on the program. Thanks so much. I wanted to start off uh, just referencing some of the remarks that you made today in London at General Dynamics, in particular about the announcement last week uh, through the Prime Minister about sending some LAVs to Ukraine and that the deal that uh, was announced then is, was still being finalized. I think you used that terminology again today and I'm wondering why the deal has yet to be finalized. We are putting the finishing touches on some of the specifics relating to the vehicles and the schedule for delivery. We do know that these vehicles will begin to ship this summer, uh, but we want to make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, and uh, we will then begin the shipments of the 39 vehicles to Ukraine. So you do anticipate that momentarily the deal will be finalized? Yes, of course, and we would not have announced it if we did not have that confidence. And of course, they will be shipped this summer and we'll continue to make sure that the Canadian Armed Forces also receives the 360 vehicles that we had previously contracted GDLS for provision of. Uh, when you say it's going to be shipped, they are going to be shipped this summer. Uh, I imagine that's sometime soon, and I'm wondering from your perspective, uh, how much time is of the essence? And I ask in particular because of the advances Russia has made in the east of Ukraine, you know, capturing all of Luhansk, half of Donetsk, just in the basically in the past week. Uh, Ukrainians who have been on this program, various politicians have said over and over again, you know, this this point of the war is very important. And in particular, getting the equipment that's been promised to us, the lethal aid that's been promised to us as timely as possible is the most important thing we need in order to stave off the Russians, even at this juncture. Uh, how important from your perspective is time? It's a very good point, Vashi. I will say that this is a point that I discuss often with my counterpart, Minister Resnikov, the Defence Minister of Ukraine. And in particular, when we are discussing Canada's provision of supplies, uh, whether it is the anti-tank weapon systems or whether it is the ammunition or further artillery, and in this case, the vehicles, I do specify what time frame they are working under and, of course, it is as soon as possible, and that's exactly what I stress and we stress in the negotiations. Uh, we need these vehicles to go ASAP, and I reiterated that today at GDLS, where I'm so pleased to be to thank them for their work in the production of the 39 vehicles that we'll be sending to Ukraine, and as well, their contribution to the Canadian Armed Forces by providing 360 additional LAVs, which are so important for our equipment and our readiness here at home as well. I know you said, Minister, that you expect those shipments to start this summer. Do you expect all 39 to arrive in Ukraine by the end of the summer, or is there a timeline for, for that? It's a good question. Those 39 vehicles are basically ready to go. Uh, we are finishing the negotiations and then they will begin to be shipped. Uh, again, the shipment should start this month and continue on through the summer. Uh, so just so that I'm clear, that means that you do expect all 39 to get there over the next few months or is this something that could take six months or longer? Not at all. It's the next few months. It is a very short timeline. As you said in your question, this equipment needs to get to Ukraine as soon as possible. On that subject, I was interviewing your counterpart from the UK not too long ago on the program, and he stipulated that he thought that the war could last at least another year, would last, would last, I should say, at least another year. Is that your assessment as well? Secretary Ben Wallace and I are close. Uh, we recently discussed this very issue in Madrid last week. And indeed, it is our 
collective view that this war may indeed be protracted. And the important point for Canada is that our government stands with Ukraine in the short and the long term. And that is why you will continue to see us step up in various ways to support Ukraine, whether it is in terms of military aid, humanitarian aid, economic aid, in terms of the food security crisis, in terms of economic sanctions, in terms of welcoming refugees uh, from Ukraine into Canada. This is a priority for our government and we will continue to stand with our allies like the UK in the effort to support Ukraine's solidarity and its security and its territorial integrity. Uh, you referenced your uh, your visit today, though, to G GDLS, pardon me, uh, and the work that they're doing there. And just before I let you go, Minister, I, I was listening with interest in, uh, to your exchange with another reporter during your press conference about uh, GDLS and the contracts for supplying uh, labs to Saudi Arabia. And, and I note, as you pointed out, that there are, there is a permit process in place, that each permit is examined by the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, and they have to be confident that 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 you know those specific uh, that specific equipment is not being used in human rights abuses but on the general question i think that a lot of canadians would have as we talk about for example the morality or lack thereof of what russia is doing in ukraine on the general question of how the the top levels of the saudi arabian regime acts and the human rights atrocities that they have committed are you really okay with supplying them with any kind of military equipment Well, what I can say is that this process, which is run by Global Affairs Canada in including the review of permits and the ensuring that there aren't human rights abuses of grave levels that are occurring prior to us providing those expert port permits, this is something that our government takes extremely seriously. Uh, we have been and will continue to be committed to human rights and human rights issues writ large, and we need to make sure that that process runs with integrity, which I know my colleague Melanie Jolie does. In terms of GDLS itself, we have to recognize that this is a very important aspect of the economic fabric of London and the country generally speaking. And we are very grateful for the work that they have done to ensure that these 39 vehicles can be shipped to Ukraine as soon as possible, as well as providing the Canadian Armed Forces with 360 additional light armor vehicles, which of course is my top priority. We need to make sure the Canadian Armed Forces have the equipment and resources they need to serve our country domestically and internationally every single day. And I do understand what you're saying most certainly about the number of jobs at GDLS uh, and that, that, that the file is generally under Minister Jolie's purview. But you were there today. You were heralding uh, the work that's done there. Separate from that, though, uh, you know, back to my original question, I do understand there is a process underway. But for Canadians who have watched so many different abuses be committed by the very regime your government is selling weapons to, can you sympathize or understand with the, 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 the level of concern that they might have that, that your government is doing that? I certainly sympathize with uh, human rights abuses and atrocities that occur. I also believe that my colleague, Minister Jolie, takes a very serious look at each of the export permits before she grants them. And I know for a fact that this is run on a case-by-case -case basis, on a very careful basis as well, because it is so very important for Canada to continually stand up for human rights. By the same token, I want to make sure that we recognize uh, the contributions of all of the workers right here in London for the excellent work that they are doing in making sure that these vehicles are sent to Ukraine in good order and in good time. Okay, Minister, I'm out of time, so I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Thank you for yours. Take care. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.